YouTube, this is Orange73 here and today we're back with another video. This time we're going to be talking about adding a secondary battery to your Super 73 ZG. This is the battery that I purchased off eBay. You can see it's 15 amp hours to add to the original 8.6 amp hours. Both batteries that we're using, the original and this one, are 36 volt. I have no affiliation with Best Path, these are just the guys that I ordered mine from. I would say look for your local dealer on eBay but make sure your battery is 36 volt and hopefully it comes with a warranty as well. As we're talking about warranties, it's probably worth mentioning that this is going to avoid your original equipment manufacturer warranty from Super 73, so everything you do from this point on is entirely your own risk. Let's get into it. First of all, we're going to undo these two little screws underneath the back of the seat. Each of these screws has a little black collar and a washer, but also in between the bar and the seat itself you'll see a little rubber grommet, sort of looks like a polo made out of rubber. When you take them out, make sure you put them somewhere safe. Okay, so next up we've got two slightly shorter screws that are in the front of the saddle. Uh, these do not have the little black plastic bits, but they do have the washer and they do have the rubber polo, just like the other ones at the back did. Throw these in the bag for safekeeping too. You should be able to wiggle the saddle free now. Um, you should also be able to remove the little bits of annoying plastic that come wrapping the seat originally that I couldn't get out until I got these screws out. That's another one of those little niggly jobs out of the way. Once you've done that, you'll notice that the seat isn't completely removable yet. There's some extra work that you're going to need to do where you unclip and cut away some of these cable ties that are holding the cables next to the frame and also unplug some of the plugs. We'll get around to that in a minute. In the meantime, let's fit the battery. What you're going to need to do is screw the battery mount to the bottle cage mount holes using the screws provided. These are standard fitting so they should be quite easy to get right. Um, there's no special tricks here. Thank you. 
can then position the battery in the mounting bracket with making sure that the cable is popping out the top end of it. Before you do though, make sure that the battery locking mechanism isn't stalling your progress like what I did. Alright, that's all fitted and locked in place now, and looking good. Next, with pliers in hand, we're going to go around the other side and we're going to cut off those cable ties that were stopping the cables coming off before. There's one there. Oh, bit of a close-up of my saddle there, sorry about that. There's the other one done. And there's another one that we've got up at the top there. Those cables should be free now. You can unplug that connector. It's a bit of a tough one. And now the saddle should be free. Next you need to go around the saddle and remove the eight little tiny screws that are holding the white top to the plastic base. Pay special attention to the two screw holes that have got the silver covering sticky tape over them. There's the warranty.
once you've done that, the white covering should come off the seat without any problems. And inside you'll find the battery and the controller. So for those of you who are interested, it's a DMHC Science and Technology 36 volt controller. And the battery that goes along with it is a custom built Super 73 battery pack assembled with Panasonic cells. 8.7 amp hours. So together with the other 15 amp hours, that gives us 23.7 amp hours. I felt quite lucky when I figured out that you could push the cables through the hole where the grommet was at the front of the seat there and plug them straight into the Anderson power pole connectors. do this now you should be able to start the bike up using just the external battery on its own. There you go all the bars light up no problem. Just going to lean down here and turn the switch off on the battery itself. And the lights go off. Okay so that's most of the hard work done but we've got a little more to do. If you want to run both batteries, you'll need this wire connector. You plug the single end of the lead into the controller, and then you plug the original battery into one end and the new battery into the other. When you connect the batteries in parallel, they give you a combined capacity of 23.7 amp hours, which should triple the range of the bike. And that's it, job done. All you have to do now is reverse everything by putting all the screws back in place. You might want to put some new cable ties around your cables too. Thanks guys.